Hello and welcome to MacFormit's weekly Apple extravaganza. I'm Chris Finn. I'm Matt Bolton. And on this episode we talk about Redmond and Soul starting the photocopiers. Smarter assistants. And the new cheap Apple MacBook Pro. Let's start with news in the world of Apple. As always, Matt has no idea what I'm about to talk about. Uh, the topic we're going to talk about is advertising. Um, specifically the advertising that Samsung and uh, Microsoft have recently been doing specifically oh, yeah. against Apple. Yes. And it's well, really, that's not recent for Samsung. No, 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 it's not recent for Samsung per se, but it's, it's very explicit in both cases. And it's a really interesting thing because there's that... It's, it's, it has been forever received wisdom in the advertising community, which is a very nice community, that um, you never name-check your competitors' products. Yeah. Because it puts it puts... It gives them power, it put, makes you look defensive. It gives it makes you free awareness. Bullying as well, and it's acknowledgement of the strengths of another uh, competitor's product. Yeah. So, um, so Microsoft this week has launched a series of three ads for its Surface Pro 3. Um, some of which are, are just so... Ex so it sort of harks back to I'm a Mac, I'm a PC, you know, when, when Apple was the underdog and tried yeah. to, to fight its way up. Uh, Microsoft now positioning itself as the underdog because we have side by side comparisons of the MacBook Air and the, tab the Surface Pro 3, and Microsoft is explaining the difference between them and why you want them. But it, it's, it's crazy. Well, mostly why you want one of them. Yes, <laughs> why you want it, I should have said. But it's crazy because the. Uh, it's, it's a. I think it's a bit of a misstep because it one of them at least depends very strongly on you knowing Apple's advertising as well because it shows the fact that if you've got a MacBook you have to buy an iPad as well for a touch screen which the Surface has and you've got to buy a notebook as well so you can write with a pen which the Surface has. Now leaving aside the ridiculousness of that statement the end with I've got a lot to carry and Microsoft saying see you are more powerful than you think you are which is the tagline to Apple's current advertising campaign. Yeah. Which is weird because see in order for that line to have explicit resonance you need to be so inside the industry i suspect like you know the advertising executives will think they're being terribly clever but i worry that it's going to fall flat well there's another possibility which is that that one wasn't even particularly made for tv mm. we're sitting here talking about it and it's been written about on any number of um, indeed uh, websites. Yeah, the echo chamber Job is done. echoing. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's look quickly at the Samsung one as well. So, Samsung has a campaign um, which again references the, the power thing. So, um, uh, about Apple talking about how powerful you are, where it's put um, adverts up. They're called it's called the wall hugger ads because they're saying that um, the the Samsung Galaxy S5 has a much stronger battery life. I saw they did the advert of iPhone users being stuck yeah, by walls. Absolutely. So they recently expanded it into a bunch of new airports, so JFK, uh, New York, O'Hare, Midway, and Chicago. Oh, are these actual adverts on the walls? Yes. Okay, because they did an advert, they video did, advert, did, did, did. with people being stuck by the walls. Absolutely. I didn't see they were. So now they're expanding that out. So that there are actually some power outlets and. Uh, they read, so there's a Samsung Galaxy branding on it, and they read um, Samsung Galaxy S5 with ultra power saving mode, so you have the power to be anywhere but here. Yes. But if, as if I was a Samsung user yes. and I was going to recharge my phone in one of those covered sockets, I'd be less than amused. Well, exactly. And the, somebody else made the point, and I was reading the story on Mac Rumors, and one of the early comments from Samplane123 uh, reads, Still pretty, pretty funny how Samsung take to attacking Apple's users, their potential customers, rather than Apple themselves, which is a, a, a valid criticism. It is, and they definitely did that in some of their other adverts. I'm not sure if this is that. Does it, cause it, does it call people stupid for choosing Apple? Well, the, the, the wall huggers campaign in general, it, that, that is, I can see the point you're making that it, it's, it's criticizing the phone, yeah. but it is implicitly criticizing the choice that these people have made. Um, and. I but you can't, that, that's advertising. you can't avoid that if, yeah. if you're going to tell people that yours is better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Apple, that's certainly what Apple did with Mac and PC back in day. Yeah, which, uh, which um, if you're watching outside of the UK, you might not realise that there were actually UK-specific variants of the ads that ran with uh, David Mitchell and Robert Webb here yes. in the Great British They didn't put them British loads on TV, but I remember them being on bus stops and things like that, which yeah. funnily enough. yeah. yeah. Um, but they didn't last that long because 
they weren't the best two personalities it was, to use for it, was it tricky. because was they baggage. brought in their baggage from their other roles, yeah. which made PC a bit too adorable, Yes, basically. But I think John Hodgman was adorable as PC in the original Apple adverts as well, and Apple's, Apple's idea would never have been to utterly... You, 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 it's that thing of you can't attack the group you're trying to attract <laughs> too much, otherwise you'll just turn them off. So there was always a little bit of um, dorky adorability in PC. Yes. Um, let us know what you think of those uh, advertising campaigns. Have a look. Um, the uh, Microsoft ads are on Microsoft's YouTube channel. And uh, if you see the Samsung ads around, I haven't seen them in the UK, but if you see the Samsung ads around, <laughs> uh, let us know uh, in the comments below. Let's move on to the wider world of tech. As ever, Chris doesn't know what I'm going to discuss from the more general world of technology and wonders, yeah. uh, but it's something a little bit Apple related. It's Viv, which is the new concept for an assistant, I think is fair to say more than a functioning product yes. from the makers of Siri, who pretty much all left Apple as soon as they were hired to go off and make something that was even fancier than Siri. And they've announced it and it's called Viv. Uh, it's a great name. In, in the UK, it just conjures up images of like you know, craggy old women with a fag iron out, pouring a cup of tea, builder's tea. From how them. do you pour a <laughs> cup of tea? <laughs> it's how you pour tea, isn't it? I, what I drink like tea. <laughs> it's what's in here. Um, All right, Viv. How's it going? Right. So Viv, yeah. she'll, she'll do anything for you. Yeah. Uh, the idea is that it's much more intelligent than Siri in that it, it doesn't just follow paths to things that it's programmed to do it can learn to do almost anything how this would be done is super vague yes. but the idea is that it's much better at breaking down requests to find information so you, one of the examples they gave was i want the cheapest flight from wherever to san francisco leaving this date coming back this date and which sort of seems like something you would expect Siri to be able to handle mm. in a future version mm. if it had flight data built in or mm. yada yada but the point is that with Viv you don't need flight data built in it will somehow find this information anyway and it will break down the dates you want and understand what you mean by cheapest um, I don't know exactly how it's supposed to get information that it's not programmed to because one of the things with Siri of course is that it can back onto Wolfram Alpha yeah which is again a computational knowledge engine it uh, again with Wolfram Alpha even though it might seem similar to, um, depending on how you're using it, to even just a simple Google search. In the background, it's it's actually using a massive amount of data to programmatically arrive at the, res at the answers yeah. rather than looking up a table of pre-existing answers. But all the data is already in there is the, yeah. is the key thing. Um, this is something else. And I, I can almost imagine some Rube Goldberg-esque ways it could be done, like whatever supercomputer or servers it's backing onto could be able to navigate a web page in a mouse interface and interpret the data using OCR or voiceover or something. I'm going to say like, it's not that. I'm Yes. <laughs> yes, probably not. But <laughs> little mice coming shakily out on like scissor connections. And <laughs> well, not literally. I thought maybe it could use software to control the mouse. But yeah, all that. One of the things that I read about Viv was that, um, and again, this is one of those things that it sounds very uh, theoretical rather than um, actually being a thing, is that it can, on the fly, generate, it can create programs on the fly in order to be able yes. to answer particular queries. It's actually writing, it can write code it's, for itself. It's writing new software to handle what you're asking. Which is, again, slightly terrifying. A little bit. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a bit, that's the runaway to Skynet. I was going to say, we all made these jokes about Google being Skynet, but... It's just an it starts off as an assistant, yep. a helpful voice. Yeah. Uh, so do you reckon yeah. that the Viv engineers are ultimately going to be bought by Apple again? <laughs> These poor guys. <laughs> just the, the gravitational just black keep... hole of Apple just keeps pulling them in. <sighs> I guess it'll be that or Google at this rate. Um, we've had Microsoft is about to fully launch Cortana, Cortana which is its... Siri equivalent, but I saw as well. Like I'm, you know, I'm not a gamer, but because I'm right in saying, aren't I? That in, in the US, Cortana was voiced by the person who voices somebody from Portal or some game. Oh dear! You mean it is Cortana, the assistant, voiced by somebody from a game? 
Because what, what, Cortana, other... Cortana is named for an AI assistant in Halo. Oh, that's maybe what I'm thinking of. So, yeah, so I think like it is voiced by the same person, but it's not kind of voiced by some famous person from a name. They've literally gone, oh, you know, you know, it was funny. Well, like yeah. what we could do yeah. is so, yeah, it's, it's not kind of voiced by a famous person. It's they, they wanted the they thing. Lifted Cortana. They wanted to make the thing real. It's not because. I think she's a hologram. But by the same token, I the, the reason I brought that up was because I, I, I read that um, when it's been brought to the UK, it's been voiced by someone else, which seems to take oh. to, to give it a different accent, obviously, to May- localise it. But that seemed like a, a misstep to me because if people already have a, a, an emotional, however superficial, but an emotional connection with that character, yeah, then that would strike me. Hopefully, they'll include it as an option. Yeah, just just as a as a tick box somewhere. Use original voice or something and then for the people who don't know the game they've got a Britishy person because yes. we can't cope with being no, told by Americans no. <laughs> being told for foreign policy has been telling us for years well, yeah, yeah. Uh, but um, so uh, how far away are we with this what what kind of are they giving any kind of time scales or is it just not hey that, guys not that I saw yeah. but is Siri even considered complete now did I, it come out of beta I don't know if it ever formally came out of beta uh, but I don't it doesn't sound like it's anywhere near hmm. launching. And like, who knows, by the time, it might just turn out to be a technological exercise that leads to something else or something that gets integrated into something else, especially if they do get bought up by Apple or Google or one of these mini companies. One interesting thing, of course, is watching what happens as the power of portable, because early on in the days of portable devices, they were incredibly dumb because the, you couldn't have enough computing power to process stuff yeah. much so you backed onto huge cloud systems in the background so stuff was sent over the, over the web but like as as time goes on these d- devices themselves are becoming pretty powerful so I wonder at what point we'll stop backing onto cloud um, intelligence and just have the these little assistance intelligences running on the devices themselves that that seems kind of like reasonable that it would happen soon. But what I wonder is, they're going to keep wanting to expand the capabilities. And every time they do that, they'll outpace mm. the growth of the power in the device. So they'll just, I can imagine, they're just always needing the cloud. Plus data because sets. They, yeah, that. And because they always end up moving the goalposts further than where the hardware can score the goal. This metaphor has fallen apart. <laughs> Take us on. Yeah. Um, uh, let us know in the comments below what you think of of, of that. Um, uh, is Siri good enough? Do you actually use Siri? Um, I use it occasionally for like setting timers and stuff, but I never... It's because it could be my British reserve, but I just don't like the idea of sitting in the office. And even though it might be more efficient to, pr- to, to do a task with Siri, I just don't like the idea of talking out loud to it. I like the idea of you doing that in the office. Okay, uh, let us know in the comments below what you think of Siri and Cortana and the upcoming Viv. All oh, right, let's move. That was quite Australian. Let's move on to Kit of the Week. Laptops. Here's a new one. Apple released a bunch of new ones, sort of. Updated. No, it didn't. Tweaked. Yes, very slightly tweaked. Very slightly tweaked and slightly price like adjusted. A bit like it's done to most of the things. <laughs> in the past. <laughs> this is not an uncommon occurrence in technology. Let's move on. I mean, in the last couple of uh, <laughs> couple of months, we've yes. seen the small tweaks to the iMacs and the... Did they update other stuff or am I just... <laughs> But with the iMacs, yes. we, um, we said, because um, everyone called the new iMac the cheap iMac, and we said that's bollocks. But in this case, I am confident in calling this a cheap MacBook Pro. It is a good value MacBook Pro. It's not cheap in the sense of it's still a lot of money. Yes. But it's no longer, it's, it's not poor value. It's actually really, really good value. It's a cracking little machine. Yeah, so that's the thing. It still isn't cheap. It is still a thousand pounds. Uh, and however many dollars um, that equates to 1100 or something. So this is the 13 inch. Yes. Entry level retina. And this is the new one. The brand it new looks one. exactly the same as the <laughs> yes. last one, but honestly. It's such a beautiful little machine. It's so it's lovely and light. Such a, in fact, talking of things that are lovely and light, I'm now going to set you a challenge, Matthew. Do you know how, in, in I think this could be a, a, a myth, but I believe that in the army, at least in days gone by, they used to make miscreants hold pillows. Yes, for yeah, a long I've heard time. the thing. What we have here <laughs> is um, the PowerBook G3. Yes. Which is a beautiful machine. It does actually work. And it's, it's got battery life in it. Does um, it? Oh, that. Yeah. There we go. Uh, so, but this is, um, we could safely say, not light. So let's see how long you can hold that for in one hand. As we talk. Right. Good. Am I allowed to adjust my grip? No. Nope. I wish I'd chosen a different... Uh, <laughs> it's quite loud. It is quite loud. Yeah, that's the hard disk. 
Is it? That's just the hardest, not I the fan. I thought it would be the fan. No, no, that's the well. hardest. So it will spin down. But uh, basically, this is from the late 90s, and, you know, things done change. Look at yes. the thickness of it. Let's see if Tom can get that into uh, into frame. Come on, turn it end on. I yeah, said I wasn't go. allowed to... <laughs> now we're just smiling for a picture. Uh, so, yes. So, the it, new... The point is, um, while it may still be a £1,000, the new... I was just going to put it down and forget your challenge. <laughs> <laughs> the new Retina MacBook Pro... I should this one as part of the team challenge, shouldn't I? Low, that's not even a challenge. <laughs> the new low-end Retina MacBook Pro 13-inch is really good value, yeah. especially compared to the old range. Yeah. Uh, ultimately, whether it's good value is sort of down to you. An exercise left to you, the viewer. So while we said this, um, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, because it was the case that um, this was a machine that was £150 more... Yes, the, the entry level Retina MacBook Pro cost £150 more. And came with half the RAM. It had yes. 4 gigabytes of RAM rather than 8 gigabytes of RAM. Yep. Whereas this one is £150 less than it used to be as an entry level Retina MacBook Pro in the, in the UK. And it has a 8 gig of RAM. Yep. Otherwise, it's the same except for the updated processor. Yeah. Um, and it's just a very, very capable machine. Eight gig it's so fast. So fast. So but, like. It's not the most powerful in the range, obviously, no. because it's the cheapest in the range. Yeah. It's dual core, it has hyper threading, so it can do good video exports and stuff like that, yeah. or reasonable, shall we say. Yeah. But you just turn it on, it comes on instantly, you open an app, the app opens instantly, yeah. it's really fast. Part, partly due to the SSD, obviously, it's inside there, PCIe um, SSD, so it's very, very fast. Exactly. Only 128 gigabytes. Yep. You've got to kind of make your peace with that, I guess, because otherwise um, your only other choice is expanding through the SD card. Yes, we alluded to uh, the, the 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 models up from this one are now really quite poor value. Yes. This is fantastic. Yeah. The rest are, uh, I said at the time, unjustifiably, and I Stick haven't fight. seen any justification yes. <laughs> yet. Um, unjustifiably poor. It used to be you paid an extra... Hundred and fifty pounds for the next model up, and you got. Or was it two hundred pounds? I think it was hundred. Now it's two hundred pounds, isn't it? Ah, okay, okay, right. Yeah, I think. Um, it used to be you paid an extra one hundred and fifty. I've, I've, you've got me really confused you, you, now. You paid a, a, an amount of money. It was either 150 or £200. You got double the RAM and you got double the storage. Yes. Now you just get double the storage. And you pay more. And you pay more. The, the delta has widened. You are now paying more to get less. When you comparatively, up, comparatively, when you when you buy the next one up now, yeah. and that seems like a huge oversight. How you doing? Good, really good. <laughs> um, but I'm like, not gonna be able to like do any more writing <laughs> with my arm later. But th this just got me crazy the day I was I was using this for. Uh, and in fact, in the next issue of Mac Format, uh, I say next issue. It'll be a little while away by the time we, you see this. But um, we did a sort of farewell to Lucida Grand. Um, the Mac system font, but yes. so Helvetica new has been, uh, or Helvetica Neue has been um, introduced in Yosemite, and I was using this to do uh, our classics page at the back of the magazine, and just when you picked it up, you go, this was acceptable, we thought this was good. This was phenomenal. I mean, it was, I mean, this was a G3, remember, yeah. and, and that was a massively powerful uh, CPU for the time. <laughs> it's going. <laughs> it's, it's wilting slightly, but it's so thick, and it's so unbelievably heavy. Yes. It's so, so... Uh, I can as believe, you can attest. I can believe how heavy it is. <laughs> the longer I hold it, the more I believe <laughs> more it. Believe. Okay, let's uh, put you out of your misery. Not by killing you, but by allowing you to put it down. I'm going to try not to bash the uh, microphone. But, you know, too much. It, it is also a very, very beautiful machine. Still, to this day. It's a lovely, lovely looking thing. Keyboard still works really well. The screen seems huge on it. To me. It. You said this was... It's a 14 inch. Oh, this was 14, okay. So yeah. it's a, it's a and especially because it's a 4x3. So exactly. It seems really tall. Taller. You've got a tiny trackpad. Tiny little trackpad. Absolutely, Absolutely minuscule little yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, let's move on. Uh, so let us know what you think of this what? great machine. <laughs> yeah, did, did you have a G3 or, well, any of the others? Um, this, this laptop is actually my girlfriend's who bought one um, of the new entry level ones. Thanks, Katrina. Because she was. Um, we were thinking about getting one anyway, and then they made it better value. Um, so we went for it. But she used to have one of the 12 inch power books. So um, has a, a line in uh, Apple's awesome, smaller, good value yeah. um, 
little laptops. Um, but is that is the little laptops even if they're reasonably powerful what you're interested in, or is it all the the 15 inch ones that? Um, and if you, you think, think about best. buying this rather than the MacBook Air, which we think is probably quite a good suggestion, uh, let us know in the comments below. Yes, absolutely. Uh, subscribe to the Mac Format YouTube channel for more videos like this and even more awesomeness from us in all different formats at youtube.com forward slash Mac Format UK. Actually, mostly just video format in that context. Yeah. Uh, you can watch previous editions of the show by clicking the button in the middle of your screen to view previous episodes of the weekly extravaganza. And you can, of course, get the latest edition of Mac Format magazine completely free inside our interactive, beautiful iPad edition. You can grab that for uh, iOS from newsstand at macformat.com forward slash iPad. But that's it from this week. We'll see you next week. Bye. Where is, is um, Samsung, Samsung based in Seoul? Yeah. Okay. okay. Are you going to make some sort of soul music? No. Oh. Could I you? <laughs> yeah, I'll try and work it in.